just talk for a second. My understanding is that next month several members of council, business leaders, will be traveling to Minneapolis for an exchange. I'm excited about that because Minneapolis was ranked number one in terms of health and wellness while Oklahoma City was ranked last. But there's another issue I think that will be very interesting, and I hope that there's some time devoted on that trip, and that is to the convention center in Minneapolis and the situation there with both its convention center expansion and its hotel. I was struck this week by two events. One was the MAPS Advisory Council voting on a new timeline, which I understand is coming at us like a tsunami, that not whether or not we move the convention center up in the timeline, but how much. One, two, three, four years with the subcommittee talking is moving it as far up as 2013. Then I was struck by Steve Lackmire's article in the Oklahoma on Sunday about talking about council members talking about the viability of the Coeur d'Alene Park. And I think there are some questions there, but I just want to make sure that the public understands that there's plenty of viability questions to go around. As Jim Couch pointed out two weeks ago, the Coeur d'Alene Park can be programmed differently to minimize maintenance costs. But the convention center, if you look at the experience that's going on around the country and city after city, there's some real frightening prospects. We didn't do a need study. We turned it over to the chamber, who then commissioned the Convention Sports and Leisure Company out of Texas in March of 2009, and they recommended expansion and that we were missing out on millions of dollars of business. And what wasn't publicly vetted is that the public would have to come up with some $50 million to subsidize a hotel, and Kathy O'Connor pointed out to us a month or so ago that that would be one of the biggest problems facing this council in terms of implementation of MAPS 3. A recent Boston Globe article widely discredits what the Convention Sports and Leisure has come up with. And in city after city, Philadelphia, San Antonio, Washington, D.C., New Orleans, CSL has come up with that recommendation, and the numbers are not panning out. The convention hotels in Baltimore, Austin, and Phoenix are doing so poorly that their public managers have suffered hits to their credit rating. The Massachusetts Convention Center Authority Executive Director remarked in that Boston Globe article, convention consultants in general have done such a disservice to the industry by consistently overstating the business potential of expansion, and Minneapolis in particular has took the recommendations of CSNL, and they're sitting at 50% occupancy of their convention center, and they are hemorrhaging as much as $15.6 million a year after taking CSL's recommendation and expanding. So, yes, the Coeur d'Alene Park has some potential maintenance issues, but let's be clear that if the convention center is, the convention center has much bigger potential deficits, and to rush that closer in the timeline without having that figured out first seems completely fiscally irresponsible. I'm not saying we shouldn't do a convention center. The people voted on it. Clearly we need to do it. But ADG, in its most objective form, came up with a timeline in March and said the convention center should be done last, and the other things that were more popular with the public should be done first. And now there's this tsunami coming at us, I believe on June 14th, where we've got to push the convention center up a number of years. I just hope that, I think the original timeline produced by ADG was the most objective, and I hope that we take a close look at this in Minneapolis. The convention center would not have passed, I just want to say in terms of popularity, the Gazette and Channel 9 poll rank convention center at 27%, 8% in Larry's ward. The chamber, it sounds like, is about 37%. Meg, Pat, and I were at the Urban Land Institute, and we asked why would you not do a line item in the convention center, and Mayor Humphreys just very honestly said the convention center would not have passed by the people. We never could have got the people to have passed the convention center. So it did pass. It was linked with other things that were very popular. I think those other things that were very popular with the people should take priority, especially when these other very concerning fiscal issues have not been solved first. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Thank you.